perfect whole my heart and my hands are serving a sacred plan I know that it's true when all that I am comes down to you I know that it's true Good morning and welcome to Unity Church of Oklahoma. My name is Pastor Robert Bride. It is my joy to welcome you here to this time of celebrating spirit, this time of worship together. And all that I am, God, we give to you. Will you join me as we open in prayer? We give thanks to you, Mother, Father, God, for your presence that is always with us. We thank you for this time and space that we are alive, that we are experiencing your blessings, and we open up our hearts and minds to experience the fullness of life in this moment in time. It is all here for us, and we claim it in the here and now. We claim this in the name and in the nature of the living Christ. Amen. It's true. Thank you, Jody. My name is Linda Burdett. Welcome. And today, as we light this candle of release, I invite you to watch as the flame offers up the heat to all in the universe. And in this flame, in this heat, we can release and let go of everything that stands between us and the life that we want to live. We release everything that holds us stuck in lack and let it go so that our abundance can move to us and through us. Thank you, God. Grander earth has quaked before Moved by the sound of his voice Seas that are shaken and stirred Can be calmed and broken for my regard Through it all, through it all My eyes are on you Through it all, through it all It is well Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you, and it 
it is well with me. Far be it for me to not believe Even when my eyes cannot see And this mountain that's in front of me Will be thrown into the midst of the sea through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. Through it all, through it all, it is well. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you, and it is well. It is well. And now for our reading for today, Consciousness. Conscious, conscious of high and heavenly truths, I am lifted above all material limitations. Spiritual consciousness transports us above the limitations of the material world. Our high thought serves to exalt us above everything that binds us to earthly conditions. Conscious of man's freedom in Christ, we are exalted above every belief that would hold us to mortal thought. To rise above material limitations, we must get the consciousness that truth frees, that it frees to the fullest extent. Conscious of man's life in Christ, we are lifted above every belief in disease. Spiritual consciousness carries us to a realm in which disease has no part. Conscious of man's abundance in Christ, we are lifted to the realm in which lack cannot abide. In Christ, we have our being high above the limitations of the material man. Conscious of our heavenly wisdom, we are lifted in consciousness to the wisdom that is high above that of intellect. We enter the indescribable realm in which we know all things. Think on these things 
Philippians 4.8 I invite you now to take these thoughts deeper into a time of focus, deeper into a time of connection and meditation. Settle back. Take a breath and relax. Let go of all the little things that cling to you, of all the little things that can sing to you, and just allow. There is so much more. There is so much more. Breathe it in. Know it's true. You are becoming more than you have ever been before. It's okay. It's all right. It's time for that. It's your time. Breathe it in. And let go of anything that would hold you back. Let go of anything that might limit you. Let it go. It's not true. Breathe in the knowing that you are so much more than you have been before. That you are ready that you are open. You are love. It's not what you do. It's not what you want. It's what you are. Open to that. Take a breath. And let the love you are bless the world. This is your purpose. Had you forgotten? Remember. Allow it. And when you know this, when this is your truth, return your attention to the here and now. Return your attention to all that we have to learn together today. God bless you. Will you join me in prayer? We are thankful to you, Mother, Father, God, for this time of truth, that we are open and receptive to growing in truth, and that the words that come forward, the message that comes forward, falls on our ears that we learn truth and we glean from that. We claim that truth in our lives now. Amen. <clears throat> And so the story goes that a teenage boy had just passed his driving test and asked his dad if he could start using the family car. And his dad said, well, I make a deal with you, son. You bring up your grades from a C to a B average, study your Bible a little, and get your hair cut. Then we'll talk about the car. And the boy thought about that for a moment and decided he'd settle for the offer, and they agreed upon it. After about six weeks, the dad said, Son, you brought your grades up, and I've observed you've been studying your Bible. But I'm disappointed that you haven't gotten your hair cut. And the boy said, You know, Dad, I've been thinking about that. And I noticed that in my studies of the Bible that Samson had long hair, John the Baptist had long hair, Moses had long hair, and there's even strong evidence that Jesus had long hair. And his dad replied, did you also notice that they all walked everywhere they went? 
I often make the distinction that we are spiritual beings having a human experience to help us understand that our existence may not be as it appears. It appears we are human beings having a spiritual experience, and it often feels that way because the evidence of being human is all around us. And often we have to remind ourselves that we're spiritual beings. However, when we learn about truth, our experiences begin to change. Truth asks us to look beyond what appears to be real, and truth asks us to be aware of the spiritual laws and forces that govern our universe. And when we learn to use them correctly, we become an effective force of change, and happiness comes into our lives. But let's be clear about something. Spirit is constant and throughout the universe. Every being, soul, material object, and even nothingness shares the same spirit. No one person has more spirit than another. The difference from person to person and soul to soul is our awareness of the spirit in our lives. Now, some people would tell you that spirit is outside of you. Some people would, perhaps even that some people are more spiritual than others, but that isn't true. We all share the same spirit. We all have the same potential to open up into the awareness of spirit. And as we become aware of spirit, our lives change. Our awareness of spirit changes our lives. We understand love differently. Love not merely as emotion, but as a way of life, a consciousness of being present. We understand faith differently. Faith is not hocus-pocus from God, but a way to bring what we desire into the manifest realm. Spirit changes our understanding of health. Health not as in medical treatments, but knowing that we are beings in wholeness, which is an uplifting force for our body, mind, and emotions. And spirit changes our understanding of prosperity. Prosperity not as a means to bring material goods in our life, but rather prosperity as thriving channels of energy that manifest God's good in all aspects of our spiritual being in this human experience. Now today, we continue our discussion of the book Spiritual Economics by Eric Butterworth. And today's topic is treating financial adversity and our spiritual understanding of security. And I found these chapters as a compassionate view of our relationship as a spiritual being in our human experience. Compa compassionate in knowing that as a human being in this body and place, we are influenced by the circumstances that surround us. Spiritual law tells us that if we can imagine it, we can manifest it. It doesn't always manifest in the way we imagine, but we're open to the manifestations. That's really great when our thoughts are constructive, when our focus is loving and edifying and uplifting and affirmative, and we have those thoughts, we're creating the kingdom of heaven. However, when we, our thoughts detour to destructive, denigrating negativity, we're open to experiences of, of darkness as well. We don't intend to bring destructive thoughts into our lives. It's just part of the human condition. And oftentimes we go there easily, unconsciously, and we won't let go of them. Eric Butterworth says that consciousness creates circumstances, or at least sets the climate in which they happen. When our consciousness manifests negativity, circumstances arise and things happen. Things happen that we might find challenging, such as manifestations of disease or lack. But as true students, we don't stay at the place of disease or lack for long because <clears throat> we have choice. We can change our motivations and consciousness from what, make, what takes us to dark places to that which takes us towards the light. So we briefly visit in the darkness, and then we move on. 
because we use the treatments of love and light in our consciousness. And we do this because we believe in the power of affirmations and the power of prayer, and we serve God. And I don't look at those moments of destructive thoughts manifesting lack as necessarily a bad thing. I see them as our opportunities to grow into a stronger understanding with the divine. Eric Butterworth reframed this understanding of problems as projects. We don't have problems. We have projects. And we are developing our projects from lack into prosperity. Our projects of illness into health and loneliness into love. And when we identify a project in our life, we turn it to the tools of our spiritual practice and to the community of our beloveds to seek affirmation, love, prayer support on our journey back to wholeness. So often we think of our evolving process as one that we do alone. <clears throat> Excuse me. But that's an illusion we create. We're not alone. First, we believe that God the good is everywhere present, everywhere in, as, and through us. But second, in having this human experience, we are social animals. It's our instinct to be social. And so we seek others who support our highest good, affirming God with us. We surround ourselves in these beings. We, we support them, they support us. We affirm them, they affirm us. We hold them in light and love, they hold us in light and love. Jesus said in Matthew 18, 20, For where two or more are gathered in my name, I am there among them. And that's the purpose of our spiritual community, the purpose of our ministry of prayer that is offered by our chaplains and our newly launched Agape in Action, taking prayer into our community. We are not alone. Yet in this time of COVID, many of us have been isolated far more than we desire. But we are not alone. And this has been a time to raise our consciousness from waiting for things to change to experiencing the change within. Butterworth reminds us of a phrase that's often used in the Bible. It came to pass. It's an innocuous phrase that has real significance for the time. It came to pass. It doesn't stay. It came to pass. I think of this time of COVID and any other challenge in my life as something that has come to pass. The other phrase, this too shall pass, also gives us comfort. Everything that we experience is here to pass. And I find this comforting, knowing that every project is temporary. It is passing. And while it's passing, we focus on what we know to do. We focus our thoughts on what we truly desire. <clears throat> focus our thoughts on loving and forgiving. Focus our thoughts on constructive, positive reflection. Focus our thoughts on serving God and giving. Another way of thinking about this we think and act on truth as we have come to understand this. And this is our security. Humanly, we want certainty in our life. Yet life is always changing. There is no certainty in our human experience. But there is certainty in truth. And truth is divine. It is spiritual principle. We know that when we work principle, it works for us. The principle is... There is one presence and power active in the universe and in, <clears throat> in my life, God the good, omnipotence. This is our security. Whatever we invest our energy into will manifest in our lives. If we invest in constructive thoughts, feelings, and actions, we will manifest positive results. If we invest in destructive thoughts, feelings, and action, we get negative results. This is our security. Butterworth reminds us that our feeling nature is key to this. How do we invest our feelings? Our feeling nature determines a lot of how we experience life. 
Now you might say, I can't help how I feel. And I, I once knew a man who, who shared, I feel what I feel, I can't help it. Well, feelings are complex patterns in our lives. And can you think of a time when you thought you loved someone, had great feelings for them, and then something happens. You perceive that you're betrayed and the feelings change, don't they? Feelings can change. Sometimes it takes a lot of inner work, but feelings are not static, they're fluid. And when we learn to control the fluids, flow in our lives. And like you, I've had many experiences of emotions that flowed with great passion and enthusiasm for something. And then I've also had the feelings of apathy or disregard for someone or something. Yet as a true student, whenever I'm having feelings of apathy or disregard, it appears, it's a, sig it's a signal to look at them. And I ask, why is this here? Does having feelings of apathy or disregard serve my highest good? And we know it doesn't. So here is an opportunity for a project to bring our apathy or disregard into the light and allow a healing to occur. I'm reminded of the story in Matthew 28 when Jesus came upon two men who appeared demonic. And it is said that they were so fierce that no one could pass that way. And they shouted at Jesus, What have you to do with us, Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before our, the time? So on top of their mental illness, they were suffering from a persecution complex, thinking that Jesus was there to add to their suffering. Jesus didn't see them as diseased or suffering. He saw them as whole and complete, and he offered and ordered their disease out and into the swine that were nearby. And swine represent uncleanliness, and that'll be no surprise to any of us, as most of us know how awful a pigsty smells. And the swine, they run off a cliff, and then where they fall over and they perish. And this story demonstrates the power of releasing our thoughts and feelings that don't support our highest good. Sometimes we really feel stuck in them. Yet when we're able to see these feelings for what they are and surrender them into the Christ of our being, those feelings run off the cliff because they don't serve our highest good. The Christ of our being always serves our highest good. In closing, remember that we are beings of spirit. Our consciousness creates our circumstances. When we find ourselves with thoughts or feelings that express the limitations of our human experience, we can change that and we can create new patterns of circumstances. And we're not alone in this change. We can reach out and seek support from others who are on the path too. We are in this together. Will you join me in prayer? We thank you, dear God, for always being with us. And we thank you for the community of believers that surround us. That we are not alone on this path. And that you are our healing force. And when we turn into the Christ of our being, there you are. And the healing happens. And we change the patterns in our life. And we give thanks for this and claim this in the name and in the nature of the living Christ. Amen. When peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows
should buffet, though trial should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ hath regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul. Thank you, Jody. Thank you, Robert. What a wonderful message. <clears throat> I think my takeaway from the message is it came to pass. I'm, I'm keeping that. I'm, I'm going to use that. That really, really resonated with me. And now is our time of prosperity blessings. We affirm that we live in a prosperous universe that lavishes us in abundance. <clears throat> excuse me, filling our desires. As we take our tithes and offerings in our hands, we give thanks for our ability to give freely to this ministry, affirming our vibrant mission to bring truth to our world and to hold our community in prayer, affirming God's good. And as we go forward with this blessing with this prosperity and this gift, we know that it's through giving that we break through that fear of lack, those feelings that keep our abundance from us. It is through giving that we affirm we are enough, we have enough. Please join with me as we say our prosperity blessing. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, Mother, Father, God. We believe that prayer works. We hold God the good, omnipotent in all aspects of our life. If you have a prayer, please contact our office and a prayer chaplain will respond to you just as soon as possible. You can also call the Silent Unity who is available to pray with you 365 days a year. Call them at 1-800-969- 2000, or you can download their app on your phone. We also invite you to our Prayer in the Park event at Wells Park on East Madison Avenue in El Cajon. We'll be there on Saturday, March 13th 
at 1 p.m. And this is sponsored by Agape in Action. We will be offering community prayer as well as individual prayer. Thank you so much for joining us. We invite you to watch our videos daily. There are many hearts, hands, and minds that go into our worship experiences and those daily videos. We wish to thank Phil and Becky Rokel, Bob Burdett, and his lovely wife, me. Thanks to Judy Gaudet, Patricia Santos, Jody Bagley, Pastor Robert, Kathy Richmond, Reverend Deborah Reeves, Nancy Soyusu, Frankie, and Samantha Thompson. Thank you all. It's a lot of work. You're doing a great job. We would also like to announce that we are coming back together and meeting live in person. We will be able to come back safely on March 28th, Palm Sunday, and we are so happy to invite you to join us. We will be meeting at 11 a.m. You'll need to call and make reservations. We're very limited. We'll wear masks. We'll be safe. We'll be together. We are meeting at 11 because at 10 o'clock we will continue with our Zoom meeting for anyone who's not quite ready to be in person. We are so excited to see you and be with you again. God bless. And now we are going to close with the peace song and the prayer for protection. We invite you to sing along and pray aloud with us. Jody. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. that was meant to be with God as creator family all are we let us walk with each other in perfect harmony let peace begin with me let this be the moment now be my joyous vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me <clears throat> will you join me in the prayer for protection the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Dear ones, we love you, we miss you, we behold the Christ in you, and we look forward to a day very soon when we will come back together and be here live in person. Much love to you. Bye-bye. joining us and let's stay connected and grow in spirit we are on facebook search for unity church of el Cajon, and follow us and like our posts you can reach us on youtube at unity church of el Cajon. please subscribe to our channel watch our videos and leave comments which can help us improve we are on the web at unity of el Cajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive 
our weekly newsletters, which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.